Hi, I'm Mike, Pokétips Mike, and if you've been playing Pokémon for a long time, you probably think the Pokémon games are simple. But when you're new to Pokémon, there is a lot of stuff to take in. There's so many different types of Pokémon, there's so many different items, there's such a big map to explore. And since these games can be so overwhelming for new players, a lot of them make some really silly mistakes. So today, I thought it would be a lot of fun to take a look at some of the beginner mistakes that people make when they first start playing Pokémon, talk about them a little bit, and maybe even help you out if you're a newer player and you're just getting into Pokémon. Nowadays, I make Pokemon videos on YouTube, but back when I first started playing Pokemon, I made so many of these mistakes I'm about to talk about, it's actually kind of embarrassing. So, you know, don't laugh at me too much when I say some of the silly stuff that I've done. Grab your favorite snack, get ready to hear some mistakes, and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm if you haven't already. So let's jump right into things with our first beginner mistake, teaching your Pokemon four moves of the same type. Now I know I was super guilty of this back in the day. I'm pretty sure at one point I had a Charizard that knew Blast Burn, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, and probably Ember as the last move, and I thought that was the best thing since anything. Then I battled a water type Pokemon, and I realized it's probably not the best idea. One of the best things you could do with your Pokemon is teach it a diverse moveset so it can cover a lot of bases. Sure, having fire type moves on your Charizard are great, but it's always good to have a mixed moveset so you can hit Pokemon with different types of moves, so if a water type comes out, you're not totally useless in battle. I also want to give an honorable mention here to teaching your starter Pokemon all HM moves. Now, I know I've done this way too many times, and it always seems like it's with the water type starter. Since there are so many water type HM moves like Surf, Waterfall, Dive, Whirlpool, it's so easy to turn your Swampert into something that knows four HM moves. Nowadays, since the newer Pokemon games don't have HMs anymore, it's gonna be harder and harder for new players to make this mistake, but people who have played the older games, I'm sure you've done this many times. Our next beginner mistake is never using non-damaging moves. When I first started playing Pokemon, I thought moves like Leer, like Swords Dance, I just thought they were playing terrible because they didn't do any damage. I wanted to see something happen and I wanted it to happen right away and using those types of moves seemed like a waste of a turn to me. It also doesn't help that your Pokemon are usually so much stronger than the Pokemon you fight in the story mode of the games, so when they use non-damaging moves, you're just like, ha, huh, that's a free turn. But once I started learning about competitive Pokemon in online battles, that's when I really started to appreciate non-damaging moves. I think my first real experience with something like this was when I learned about Salamence and the move Dragon Dance. Dragon Dance is such a great move since it boosts not only your attack but also your speed, and Salamence is a fast and strong Pokemon, so combining the two together is like making a Pokemon into a super powerhouse. There was one time when I was younger playing Pokemon Diamond version, and I went to Toys R Us for one of those special mythical Pokemon events that they would do back in the day. I think it was for Darkrai or Shaman. While I was there downloading my Pokemon, there was another kid there who was also playing the games, and me being the cocky little kid I was, I challenged him to a battle. I led off with my Salamence, and I think he started off with like his Empoleon or something, and I just started using the move Dragon Dance. Now, he was not doing much damage to me at all because he did mistake number one, teaching your Pokemon all moves of the same type, so my Salamence was sitting there pretty, taking those attacks all day long. And then I think I got three or four Dragon Dances off, and then I just started using moves and one-shotting all of his Pokemon, including the legendaries on his team. I think I shattered that kid's hopes and dreams that day, and if you're watching this, I'm sorry that I had to destroy you so badly. Our next beginner mistake is not knowing how to leave your starting house. Now, I'm not sure if this happened to anyone else or if it was only just me, but when I got my Pokemon Gold version, I was stuck in the starting house for probably around 8 hours. 
Pokemon Gold was my first video game ever, so I didn't really have an understanding of how these things worked, and the sprites back in the day weren't really that intuitive. To leave the house in Pokemon Gold version, you have to find this weird spot in the wall that has like three gray tiles next to it, and for some reason to young Mike, that just did not make any sense at all. I spent hours just walking around the room looking for something secret to interact with, but I was having a great time. I think at that point, since it was my first video game ever, I was just still in shock about being able to control a character. Nowadays, you probably take this for granted every single time you play a game, but that first time you ever turn on a video game and you're controlling something that isn't yourself, it's mind-blowing. So I was pretty entertained, to be quite honest, just walking around that room in circles. And when I found out that you could actually leave it and there was a whole game past that area, wow, I was entertained for a long time. Please, if you made this mistake too, tell me in the comments so I know I'm not alone here. Now this next one is painful to say the least. I personally have never done this, but I've heard way too many stories of people doing this and it makes me sad every single time. This one is running away from a shiny Pokemon. If you've been playing Pokemon for any amount of time, you probably know what a shiny Pokemon is, an alternate color for a Pokemon that's extremely rare. In the older Pokemon games, your chances of finding a shiny were about 1 in 8,000, and in the newer games, it got a little easier being around 1 in 4,000. People spend days, weeks, years of their lives trying to find shiny Pokemon, but it always seems like those new players that are just brand new to the game, never touched anything before, have the best luck and run into them right away. And what do they do when they find these shinies? They think there's something wrong with the game, and they turn it off, they run away from it, and they lose the shiny. Ugh, that just gets me mad thinking about it. And the worst part is when people post online after they ran away from the shiny and ask what happened. On Pokemon Emerald, why was my Mudkip purple? I started the game on my GBA, and when I picked my first Pokemon, I chose Mudkip. But when I had to help the professor and fight off the Zigzagoon, my Mudkip was purple, not blue. Was this a glitch? I restarted the game and got a blue one, but I'm just wondering if this has happened to anyone else. That was a shiny. You reset the game over a shiny. Alright, on to something slightly less infuriating, mashing A when you're trying to catch a Pokemon. Ah. I don't know why, but this is one of the biggest Pokemon rumors ever. I feel like everybody that I've ever spoken to has done this before. Some variation of just mashing a button on their console whenever they're trying to catch a Pokemon for like good luck or extra catch chances. I feel like we all had that one kid on the playgrounds that told us about this, and when you're new to Pokemon, it does sound a little believable. I know for a fact, I did this way too long. I think I did this for maybe like four or five years after I found out about it. I knew after a while it didn't work, but it just feels good doing it, you know? It makes you feel like you're physically trying to keep that Pokemon in that ball and catch it. And I know it's probably disappointing to find out that mashing buttons does not help you catch Pokemon, but if you do feel like mashing a button right now, if you haven't already, you can mash that like button. Now back to pretty infuriating beginner mistakes, this next one is just upsetting and terrible when it happens to you. Picture this. You're up late at night, and you've been playing Pokemon for about four hours. You went all the way from the fourth gym to the seventh gym, and you just caught a legendary Pokemon. Now you're ready to go to bed and continue playing the next day, so you turn off your game. But wait! You forgot to save, and you just lost all of that progress. Ugh, that is the worst when that happens to you. I know I've done that way too many times, and nowadays there are a lot of games that just automatically save, or online games that save as you play the game, so it is understandable for new players to think, hey, everything I do is just automatically saved, so I can just turn off my game and continue. But no, Pokemon games are not like that. If you don't save your game, you're losing that progress. And our last beginner mistake is using your Master Ball on something silly. The Master Ball is one of the rarest, most powerful items in all of Pokémon. You throw it at something, and it'll catch it without fail. 
Usually, you can only get one Master Ball throughout your whole playthrough of the game, and lately the newer games have added ways for you to get more, although it's very hard. But a lot of beginners just don't seem to understand the importance and the power of the Master Ball, and they go ahead and throw it at something silly like a Pidgey or a Tata. Although, I guess throwing it at something silly is better than saving it in your bag and never using it. That's generally what I end up doing with my Master Balls. I'm always so afraid to use it because I'm just waiting for that perfect time, and that perfect time never seems to come, so I just have my Master Ball sitting in my bag, never to be used. And my friends, that is going to conclude my list of beginner Pokemon mistakes. I have made basically every single mistake on this list. It's kind of embarrassing sharing that with all of you guys. Now you guys probably think I sucked at Pokemon back in the day. But there's no better way to learn about becoming better at Pokemon. If you don't make the mistakes, you can't learn from them and become better. So I think it's good to make mistakes. In the comment section below, I want you to tell me what your biggest beginner mistake was. Please, please, please have mistakes worse. And again, please, 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 if you got stuck in a starting room in Pokemon, let me know so I don't feel alone there because that is really embarrassing. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and my friends, I'll be seeing you in the next one.